Hello, my name is Lewis and welcome to Gathering the Magic. Today we're looking at the top 10 best Gruul commanders in MTG. Starting off the list we have Pylath, World Sculptor. The legendary Gruul equivalent to Avenger of Zendikar, this elemental is all about those lands. When it ETBs you get a 0-1 green plant for each basic land you control and whenever you play a land you get to beef up one of those plants. You absolutely want to pack your deck with all those ways to play extra lands a turn. Those creatures that allow you to play extra lands each turn and of course those lands that love to crack and get you even more lands because why have one land trigger when you could have two? With so many options of cards that love lands or trigger off lands, this is that standard deck that if you don't deal with it, it will go wider than my collection of prickly marmosets. Once you get a deck like this, you won't want to leave it alone. Now before we get to number 9, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe to show your love for all things MTG. It's free to do, it helps the channel and you can always unsubscribe if you get sick of me. Next on the list we have Radha, Heart of Keld. A 3-3 Elf Warrior with First Strike that allows you to look at the top card of your library anytime and you can pay some extra mana and beef her up down the line is a commander that you just don't want to mess with. With Radha, you've got to be playing Voltron, Lands Matter, or just a cunning combination of the two. Get in all those equipment to strengthen Radha, so when the time is right, you can use that pesky rogue's passage to make her unblockable. Just like Pylaf, you want to get in all those creatures that allow you to play extra lands, because the more land you have, the more damage Radha can do. Also, make sure to have plenty of ways to get those lands from your graveyard, just in case you've got any mill-loving friends. If I was making this list, she'd go at number one because this is one of my favourite decks that I own and if you haven't already, go and check out my deck tech on her after this video. I'll leave a link in the description. Next on the list we have Tangarth, First Mate. This Minotaur Warrior really will be your first mate because there are so many ways to go with him. Maybe you want to strengthen him and give him Menace because of his abilities that will make him fully unblockable. Maybe you want to go full on Voltron Equip him with all those go-tos and start swinging. And lastly, maybe you just want to attack over and over and over again. Whack in all those extra combat steps and just keep swinging with Tangi over and over again. Tangarth is such a potentially powerful commander and a deck that my girlfriend is currently working on, so I know how I'll end up in a commander game in the near future. I'm dead. Next on the list we have Halar, the Fire Fletcher. This legendary elf archer is hella awesome. Fill your deck with all those cards with that kicker mechanic because whenever you cast a kick spell, it beefs up hella and then does damage equal to the number of plus one plus one counters on it. And thanks to the recent Zendikar Rising set, there are so many more new kicking options available. There are also a multitude of plus one plus one loving cards like Hydra's Growth and several others that would really synergize well with hella at the helm. This can really stretch out to your whole deck too, as there are plenty of plus one loving lands at your disposal. As seen in the recent Hamza deck tech, the plus one counters in MTG is a really underrated strategy, and one I absolutely plan on making a deck around in the near future. Next upon the list we have Clothis, God of Destiny. Of course, another top 10 list, another god sneaking its way into the list. I won't speak too much on Clothis, because it really just speaks for itself. You just want to go ping crazy with Clothis, deal that damage like there's no tomorrow, find all those other ways to ping your opponent in the face, and of course, whack in Torbran, Fire Emancipation, and the several other ways to constantly double or triple all that constant damage, and then you'll be smacking your opponents in the face in no time. Because, again, why do two damage with Clothis when you can do four or six? Me and Master Steve packed this in a little Theros Beyond Death tournament we did, he beat us all, and I still haven't forgiven him for it. For number five, we have Wart the Raid Mother. From the C20 set, Wart has the surprising Conspire ability. I say surprising because it's a mechanic previously listed by Mark Rosewater as one of the worst ever designed abilities. Still, it is a unique ability and one that can be played very well with in Commander. Already, as you can see here, there are so many instants and sorceries that would be so cool to copy. At no real extra price too, as you're essentially tapping two fodder pieces to do so. A reason this Gruul Sexy Beast is so popular is that there are so many sorcery options that you can just break it with. There are so many sorceries where you can create more fodder that you can later on use to tap and copy and use for even more fodder to then tap down and copy for even better instants and sorceries. 
It's one cool, janky cycle that can just go on forever and ever and ever. Damn. Endeavor, 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 endeavor. A card I was initially unsure about when making this list, but one that slowly won me over the more I look into it. Just missing out on the top three, we have Nikya of the Old Ways. A really unique commander that negates you from casting non-creature spells. So this commander deck is going to be the most creature-filled deck you've ever seen. One look at the average deck balance on EDH rec shows just how creature heavy these things get. Get in all that land because whenever you tap a land for mana, you add another mana of that land's colour. So why not add in all those green loving creatures that you can untap your lands so you can tap your lands again and double your mana. Then get in all those cards that give your creatures hexproof, flash, haste, all that horrible stuff and you'll overwhelm your opponents in no time. And lastly, with all that extra mana, you know in a Nikya deck you're going to run that primal surge. Let that trigger and pray to the gods that you straight up whack down 20 plus creatures in a row. Big stuff. Next up on the list we have Xenagos, God of Revels. Unsurprisingly, another god, and this one is a big one. Again, so many ways to run Xenagos. Maybe you want to ramp, ramp, ramp. Play them big boys like Galta and trigger Xenagos to give Galta haste and plus 12, plus 12. Again, as Xenagos has that combat trigger, maybe you want all those cards that give you those extra combat phases. But my always trusty and 100% legit Gathering the Magic card of the deck award would have to go to Malignus. Imagine having Malignus out combined with those extra turns. If you've got an enemy on 40 health, you're whacking someone for 40 thanks to Malignus and the Xenagos trigger. A hell of a combo I'd love to see myself one day, but not against me. Never ever against me. I'm looking at you, Ruben. Runner up for the best Grawl Commander, we have Rurik Thar, the Unbowed. And the amount of replies we got when we asked the question on Insta of who the best Grawl Commander is, it was easily this and our number one by a mile. Once Rurik Thar hits the battlefield, your opponents know they're in danger. Whenever your opponents cast a non-creature spell, Rurik Thar deals six damage to them. So if they have to cast a spell to remove Rurik Thar, then they know in their mind they're gonna have to take a life hit to do so. Again, with Rurik Thar, most decks tend to go creature heavy, so pack your deck with all those staple commander cards that have those triggers to kill off things your opponents control, bring back stuff for you, or just cause general tomfoolery. Definitely make sure to have some of those not so common Gruul counter spells. Let your opponents spend that six life trying to eliminate Rurik, only to have a counter option to hand. No one ever expects a non-blue counter spell, right? Winner and the best Gruul commander is Omnath, Locus of Rage. The landfall loving elemental top the votes and you can just see why. That landfall trigger is just unparalleled. Whenever a land ETBs, you create a 5-5 red green elemental. You play that fable passage, boom, there's a 5-5 elemental. Crack the fable passage for a basic land, boom, that's another 5-5 elemental. That is just value for days. Omnath has that added ability of whenever an elemental dies, it deals three damage to any target. So as well as bulking that deck with lands, you're going to be wanting to go Elemental Tribal. Whacking all those Elementals, of which in MTG there are so, so many, and all of which tend to have either a great ETB trigger or just great abilities in general. I'd say the Elemental Tribe are up there as with some of the best in the game. Because Omnath is expensive to play, you want that standard ramp, but thankfully even running Elemental Tribal has plenty of those creatures that you can just tap for mana. Omnath is such an incredible commander, and one that's actually in the 99 of my Radar deck. Maybe it's time to switch up the deck and change my commanders. There we have it, that is the list. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe for all things MTG. Check out our link tree in the description below for all of our social media and affiliate links. For now though, I'm all tapped out, so I'll see you in the next video.